Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back to another live stream of Hearthstone. Today is Monday, October 16th. We're on our third recording here. Um, sadly, all I can really do is try to get one more victory and try to see if I can get somebody random to friend me and play me or somebody that I'm already friends with to line up and play me. Uh, for this challenge of friend and sadly I also have a challenge of friend on the Asian account too but I do want to get try and get everything done at the very least we still have some news to do so let's hop back into a mage game um, not a ton of news obviously because we're at the third account in fact it's actually been quite a lot of news considering it's a Monday um, I'm also debating maybe I should just start streaming at like 4 or 5 in the evening uh, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That is an awfully late time and I am still very much trying to find hours before or after uh, Hearthstone streams to do pre-recorded footage uh, and I'm not succeeding greatly there. Uh, when I'm done streaming, a lot of times there's a silent post-game show where we're working. I'm still working on the daily quests, and um, or something else is going on. And like, well, I got very lucky there. Um, so let's. Just hit enter and what can we do? I don't understand why people have come online and it says away for five hours and like none of that makes any sense. Hmm. Well, we've got nothing, so we might as well move to the Asian account. Like, if it's a challenge a friend quest in particular, I may just have to wait. It's not a big deal. I can trade them out uh, tomorrow. I should trade them out. Uh, Welcome back. The challenge of friend quests used to be this amazing thing to, to try and encourage new people to play, but now that they've become this burden on new accounts. So trade this one out, certainly. And we need, for the Asian account, deal 100 damage to a healer, easy enough. Warlock, and five games worth of Rogue Warrior. Ugh. What a mess. What a mess. We do have some new Chinese people that did accept our friend requests. Uh, and we're going to try to do more of that. We're going to build up this account. Even if they don't know that I'm a streamer or anything like that. It, it is necessary. Um, so let's take it easy and start with the Warlock class cards. If I look at this Warlock, is it all Warlock class cards? Yes it is. So I don't have to make anything new. Not Because not that much would have changed anyways. Uh, and... We're at rank 20 to get the card backs for every account. So those aren't really concerns. Uh, however, actual ranked play is completely out the window at this point. Speaking of out the window, I think I'm going to probably uninstall Pocket Morty's, the Rick and Morty game, pretty soon. Like, I haven't touched it. I liked it when I first played it for about a day or two, but it, it is trying its best to bring me back to playing it, and I just don't have time. Uh, even Clash Royale, which I've still, which I'm still playing, is is adding in elements and changing things that are making it somewhat helpful but somewhat annoying. And it was already a game that took a lot of time out of my day. Uh, and playing any cell phone game is 
probably directly eating into time I should be playing PC games. Um, so if I knew what was good for me, I would get rid of it. Hmm. Let's see. This to start with. Uh, back to video game news. The game boss. What? It says game boss interview, and this is from Venture Beat, which is not a website I read very much. Rob Pardo. Who is Rob Pardo? He developed. Uh, he games at. Blizzard Entertainment. He made StarCraft, Warcraft 3, World of Warcraft, and he says that playtesting is critical to game design, which is like a obvious statement, I suppose. But... Yeah, we'll just play that. I believe this article was retweeted by Morgan Webb of X-Play fame, which is to, at this point, uh, which is to say she's not really famous now. She's chosen to, to give up her celebrity for the quiet life. And she tweets so rarely to the public that I, I imagine the time she does tweet something out to the public, it's either by accident or very well thought through. Um, it's kind of interesting when you look at Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb, both the hosts of X-Play. And Adam Sessler kind of As the master tried to stay in the industry and didn't really greatly succeed and then moved to becoming an, a consultant. For Friday the 13th, the game, which probably speaks badly on his ability to consult on whether a game will be good or not. Um, and really, he moved from being a consultant to downright just being a advertiser for the game. Uh, whereas Morgan Webb, on the other hand, has really stayed out of it. She seems to have zero interest in actually even saying out loud to the public what her opinion on games are like not even I like this game on Twitter which I don't know that's that's kind of weird to me she spent all those years saying and I believe her that she plays video games and then she kind of never gives an opinion out there but uh, maybe she's smart maybe she knows to only get paid only give her opinion when paid for it like she's mentioned, uh, hmm. Let's see. And she's mentioned here. They got together and did uh, did a conference together. Interesting. Hmm. There's a whole, uh, whole transcript here, I guess, if you want to listen to his whole talk. But honestly, the, the truth is, whenever these video game developers give long speeches, it's, it's the last thing I want to hear. Like, their art is in their creations, not, not in prepared PowerPoint presentations. Uh, Let's do this, do this, do this. And frankly, a lot of video game developers, just in a very general sense, should be challenged a little bit. Like video games that are made by one person don't happen that often whether that's a good or bad thing and so if a lot of video game developers uh, should should be working in a team should be getting some 
challenge some some different views, some different opinions as they're thinking and working together. Uh, usually, in my experience, if one person is just a strict dictator of how the art or how the product is going to be, it's it's not going to be that great. On the other hand, you can go the opposite direction and then have too many cooks and uh, then it just becomes bland and generalized and test marketed to death. Uh, so you need a small group of, uh, of passionate people. Uh, a great example, I suppose, of that is Yandere Simulator, where the developer of that game is almost constantly trying to convince his audience to let him do something new and something different every time he gets a new idea or wants to do something different. Uh, eh. Instead of just kind of finishing what he started and, and then working on the next project, he, he never wants to finish the game and he I mean, he's not capable of finishing the game and uh, he's not mentally capable of finishing it is the truth uh, he could probably program the fin uh, it to the to completion but he he can't let it go hmm, hmm. here's a continuation of this story on PC Gamer that that I saw where CD Projekt Red has responded to the long running number of complaints on Glassdoor.com of the environment not being great and they say quote uh, its approach is not for everyone <laughs> which is really a terrible response. Uh, that was not a, uh, a a direct quote either. And it was written as a quote, and then I'm then but half the sentence it was quoted, and half the sentence wasn't. Uh, let's see. The full quote is: "This approach to making games is not for everyone. It often requires a conscious effort to." Reinvent, it, reinvent the will, even if you personally think it already works like a charm, quote. Uh, let's see. Then they continue, but you know what? We believe reinventing the wheel every freaking time is what makes it a better game. It's what creates innovation and makes it possible for the site where we're working really hard on something and we think it's worth your hard-earned cash. Uh, the phrase reinventing the wheel is always a phrase that means you're wasting your time and it's a bad idea. And they're trying to literally redefine the phrase to make it a good thing. Uh, this is a terrible response. Hmm. The, the response that CD Projekt Red should have made to these complaints is to say we have heard th these and many other concerns of our current and former employees and we are constantly in the process of working to improve it even if they're not in the process of working improvement you still as a business would want to lie to your employees and and give them this false hope so they don't just quit and leave this response literally tells them, if you don't like it, get out. So I wouldn't be surprised with a response like this if we do see a decent number of people quit CD Projekt Red and maybe they'll go make their own company. It wouldn't be a terrible idea. Uh, this is this is a statement that says we have no intention on fix of fixing the problems that have been brought up and. Uh, we're, we're just going to keep doing what we, we're going to do. This is really a statement that would have been better to not have even put out. Uh, it's just bad PR. Like, either you lie and say you're working on it, or you say nothing. Don't say, well, our job is just not for some people. 
but we're not going to change. Uh, this is literally one of the things they were complaining about on Glassdoor, was that the management does not listen to anybody from the lower parts of the company. That the management refuses to listen. Uh, and that's exactly the response you get, is an, uh, is the management not listening and making itself look bad. Does this really change anything for the video game playing audience? Not really. Uh, unless they there is a new company that splits off from former employees of CD Projekt Red, which it wouldn't have been a bad idea right after Witcher 3 just have everybody uh, that got laid off or that quit after that game was completed uh, just go make their own company. Uh, that would have been a very smart move to orchestrate. Uh, somebody would have had to orchestrate that, but it could have been done. It could have been even a different company. It could have been Ubisoft or something saying, how about you guys start a new company for us? Uh, um, so many let's do this one. But as for the video game playing audience, it it's pretty much just a a case of of c cyberpunk. The cyberpunk game is nowhere close to being finished. Mm. It will be years and years until it's finished. We probably won't see another Witcher game for a very long time until after CD Cyberpunk is finished. So while CD Projekt Red had its moment in the spotlight with, with Witcher 3, it is also going to kind of just disappear into silence for a while. Uh, and it clearly has some growing problems that it needs to address before it starts trying to think about ideas of maybe having yet another game on top of cyberpunk and witcher games you know, get a third game out there get a fourth game out there those are things that they would want to do but uh, but you can't quite do yet uh, not until you get over those growing pains uh, here's a review by your gamer for South Park Honestly, I think if you like South Park, you're gonna want to play it. Uh, the South Park si sequel, Fra The Fractured But Whole, uh, game is specifically coming with the first game for free, which is kinda nice. Uh, but this review says Ubisoft tightens up the systems but can't quite replicate the sparkle and fun uh, for. The sparkle for this fun but flawed RPG sequel. I think honestly the problem is they're making an RPG game for South Park uh, when it should be something closer to a brawler. It should be something like the Simpsons game uh, where there's just different enemies and different jokes and you don't have to do you know, the RPG elements and, and all that. Uh, I think they've started on the wrong foot just in the style compared to the type of people that want to play this. People that want to play a South Park game are probably fans of South Park and because of that oh, they're sure. probably not the biggest RPG video gamers out there. Hmm. hmm. But if you do like South Park, I bet people will play that game. I don't know how many people actually like South Park that much. Like, I've I haven't heard of very many people that are like, I've been watching South Park from day one, and I've never missed an episode, and I'm super obsessed with it. I have all the toys, all the the side things. Are, are there South Park toys? I don't even know if there are. Probably not. Uh, it's. It's kind of like the same scenario that there's probably very few people out there that 
that have watched all of The Simpsons since day one and never missed an episode and are obsessed with it. It's something that you watch when it's on every now and then if you like South Park and all. and uh, But you don't go through all the seasons or obsess with it. Family Guy is the same way. It's like, you watch it when it's on, but I, I don't think very many people have stuck to it. Not like something like X-Files or Star Trek in comparison where people watch every single episode in order. Know it by heart. Uh, uh, moving on to the next bit of story as we're trying to wrap up here. Uh, the World of Tanks creator Wargaming has opened a new mobile development studio in Moscow. So... Uh, where are they originally? They acquired a Danish casual developer uh, a while ago, according to this article. Like, hmm. Let's see. So, they seem to be all over the European con continent. Hmm. Like, interesting. That would be kind of interesting because, you know, video game developers and creators in Russia kind of don't exist since Tetris. It's, it's an oversimplification, I'm sure. But Russia as a country is a huge landmass. There's, to my understanding, not a ton of people in a lot of the uh, in a lot of parts of Russia, but I think there's more than enough of a of a population there that there should be three or four major video game developing companies that are putting out mm. worldwide bestseller AAA games, and we don't see it. Like we don't see it. A big part of that is certainly that nobody. It's a. It's not much of a stretch to say that nobody pays for video games at all in Russia and they're all pirated there's there's no legitimate sellers in Russia all the G2A keys that are sold in Russia are, uh, are sold in Russia or, or at least that's the theory uh, so like it's it's more about money laundering and not a valid target. just getting the game for free than it is about uh, trying to support the community or anything like that and honestly I don't know if Russians make enough money to afford games like fair enough like if, if I see starving children in Africa and they're playing a Game Boy, the uh, last thing I want to do is give them a speech going, you really needed to pay for those games that, that are on your modded Game Boy. Uh, I'd be like, no, you really need to get nutrition in your body and, and a, ha a roof over your head first. Steal all the games you want until that point. Uh, uh, Next story, Resident Evil 7's free Chris Redfield D DLC is finally coming out on, in December. Uh, it's been really, really long delayed. The Not A Hero DLC, I think, was supposed to come out in February. Uh, it was supposed to come out in Spring 2017, and it's now coming out in December of 2017 if it even comes out that far and this will be interesting in its own bit because this will be a callback to the old Resident Evil games and it will be the first step to see how are they going to more integrate the old Resident Evil games that have rightfully been abandoned uh, in Resident Evil 7 for something that was better. Uh, how do you bring back the good parts of the old series that was kind of problematic? 
and was long in the tooth. And I'm looking at the trailer here, and you know, this kind of just looks like Resident Evil 6 to me, which kind of sucked. Like, it, it seems like I'm, you're playing as Chris Redfield, you've got a ammo counter and a health counter, and you're getting attacked by giant zombie monster type things, not really zombies, they're more like giant black goo war monsters and it seems like in, you're in an arena and you're just trying to survive as long as possible uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's only about three places that you go let's look at this other trailer Darn it. Job's done. Like, nothing in this DLC seems like it's connected to to Resident Evil stories event. Although there is this End of Zoe tape that seems like it might actually be connected and then when I'm done looking at the trailers I get recommended my own videos because that's how YouTube works <laughs> the one person getting recommended my YouTube videos is me because I'm the one person watching it uh, I guess that's better than the opposite it would really suck if it wasn't even recommending it to me uh, there's this Kickstarter game, and I hate talking about Kickstarter games, but this one caught my attention for its name alone. It's called Real MYHA, and it I misread that to think it was a real mist. It's, a, it's described as a peaceful sci-fi adventure with challenging puzzles from the creators of ASA, A Space Adventure, and Runsev Netera. Hmm, that sounds... sounds Russian to me. Or... something Eastern Bloc, at least. Yeah, there are some independent Russian companies. I guess I'm... What I'm saying, or trying to say, is that there aren't any AAA developers. There's no Ubisoft Russia. There's no uh, Electronic Arts Russia. There's no, no equivalent, nor an office. Hmm. This game looks nice. It, it it looks like a new mist. I know they're not trying to say it's a mist. And they're, they're probably in a better position to not not do that and just say this is a, a fan inspired version of Mist, but this is Mist. Uh, even the name. And what's funny is they're, they're ripping off the real Mist uh, moniker, which used to mint it was made in real media or real real player and now it isn't did I play enough cards no I still have some wallet cards to play so we'll keep going they're apparently hand painting some of the backgrounds hmm well I would never suggest anybody fund a game but I will suggest that people keep an eye out. The, there are some strikes against this that these this company is trying to to make a game based on a property they don't have the license to, uh, and the games that uh, the games that they're trying to. Build off of for games I don't recognize. So, 
the the names don't really have any credibility to me. Uh, they're making it an Unreal Engine 4, like them and half of it, the rest of the world. I'm seeing some elements of puzzles, and it clearly, it kind of has a more astronaut spin to Dog's it, done. which really wouldn't hurt the the story of Mist too bad. Mist's fantasy book linking stuff, while cool, is a little bit harder to to follow too. Uh, if it was just regular transportation taking us to different worlds, like a spaceship, that would be great. Uh, in Mist instead of the books. Uh, um, let's see how much have they been funded. They have 27 days to go, 63 backers, and uh, here's the forever catch-22 of of kickstarting games and funding they have one thousand three hundred and sixty eight dollars pledged and they want seven thousand and eighty three dollars as a goal so either they're just trying to get pre-order sales which I don't even know how to read Kickstarter that well to figure out if that's the case Oh, or this game might just be a scam in itself. Uh, let's go to frequently asked questions, none, updates, hmm, we have comments, hmm, campaign. Here it does say, for fans of Real Mist and the first-person adventure games, so, th so they do admit it. They don't fully ignore the fact that that's what they're aping. Hmm. And they're advertising their other games, and they kind of cross-promotion. Let's see. It's approximately one hour of game time for the original version because MYHA apparently already exists. So it's reminiscent of Mist created during the Mist Jam in 2016. Okay. Like, I must have missed the 2016 Mist Jam, but I think I did watch the 2017 one. Or maybe I did see it and just didn't take any note of it. So, not a long game. Uh, PC release DRM free. Um, original puzzle update, all new puzzles, increased game time is all they're promising. So, instead of one hour, it's going to be about two hours. That might explain the the low amount of, def of funding is that it's just not like though the one thing that mist is known for probably more than anything else is that it was an incredibly long game if you didn't know the answers back backwards and forwards uh, if you did know the answers you probably could speed run it in less than 20 minutes but uh, particularly the first game uh, well, what do you get for funding? Like, does Kickstarter not work this way? Uh, you see, it makes sense. Right here it says, making a game, even indie, requires a huge amount of resources, energy, and time. So why are you only asking for $7,000? Just to make sure. Okay, shipping. Uh... They both live in France, and all the physical awards will be shipped from this country. They can be sent worldwide to your house using the French mailing company Le Post Colissimo. Shipping a CD and DVD so from France is quite cheap, is. less than five pounds. Interesting. Hmm. That's not incredibly cheap, but we'll leave that alone. Um, 
but from France to international cost much more uh, around 20 euros not pounds uh, so yeah even less than five euros is still pretty expensive the exact price should be indicated when you choose your physical reward and make sure to check the total price hmm. We mainly want to provide the physical goods to bonus rewards for people who prefer to have box versions, but please note they are not special editions, so they do, will not include the game. They will only include the game, no additional disc, no booklet, standard d DVD case. Let's see. So, if I click back this project, how does this work? Ah, I guess that how... That's how this works. Like, I've never really looked at this. Learning new things today. Let's see. One dollar, you get many thanks. Oh, one euro. Five euros. Uh, you get backer updates. Uh, seven euros, you get the digital version of the game. And uh, nine euros, you get a pack of wallpapers and concept arts with it. Fourteen euros, you get the on screen soundtrack. Uh, Let's see, 19 euros you get the digital demo, and the game, of course. Everything is pretty much cumulative. 27 euros you get the digital beta, 32 euros you get the digital full, and at 35 or more you get the DVD copy of the game and the equivalent of the digital uh, demo and then 42 euros for the game in physical form and the star however at 45 you can ask us to be to include one special object of your choice in the game a photo of you a 3d model or special texture etc interesting so then you could probably <laughs> your ad goes here thought Like 65 dollars, 65 euros, you get a uh, real T-shirt and two digital versions of the game. Wow. Aha. And at 80 euros, you get comic books that are included. Aha. Wow, this just keeps going and going and going. And isn't this just how all Kickstarters are? It's like it's just this more and more and more just give us more money we'll find something to sell you uh there's also the black cube trilogy where you get i think the previous games that they've made two for 85 euros uh then for 118 you'll get a signed watercolor and some of these don't seem like they uh, they even include other things. So, like, the signed watercolor seems to just be the sound signed watercolor for 118 euros. And then, at 155 or more, you receive the full collector's pack with all rewards and backer updates. And that, and some of these are no longer even available. Uh, or have only a few left in them. Hmm. This just seems so small time, really. It, it doesn't feel like a game that even plans on having a thousand in sales, like a thousand units sold. It, it feels ridiculously, uh, ridiculously along the lines of just like we want to get that seven thousand dollars, and then we're gonna take the money and run. 
uh, and they may have a product. It, it actually looks like they do have a product, so it's not like a scam or anything, but I think what will happen is I'll end up buying this game on Steam and finding out that it's uh, it's fine, but it's nothing special because it will be incredibly short. Let's see if we can find the original version of the game right now on Steam. The light protects me. Hmm. No, but we got something else. Instead, interesting. So I'll look at that game. I always like to look at new games. Uh, just to expand potential things so mm, that was a lot of time to spend on a Kickstarter game when I don't want to spend any of it next bit of story we have Cuphead crosses a million copies sold good for it uh, turns out Cuphead it's a slight spoiler to say that there's a pacifist mode in the uh, run and gun things that will unlock a few more features uh, I I think having some really difficult challenges is nice and all, but it's probably a little overkill because the game was difficult enough to begin with. So after already asking the player to to uh, to take no damage and get a bunch of parries and and get an S rank in every level. Uh, there's also a pacifist P rank on top of that. Uh, and it, when you unlock the pacifist the unlocks, game. it actually makes the game even more difficult. Which is kind of silly. Uh, I would also say, as much as I love Cuphead, I, I'm also recognizing that there is a level of of looseness in the controls I've yet to see somebody who is so great at the game that they uh, they can play the whole game in one speed run without taking any damage and they they can just fly all over the screen and do amazing things it doesn't seem like that's the case it seems the game is random enough and and that every now and then even the best Cuphead players will take a little damage or mess up and have to start over. Uh, it's, it's controls I wish were a little bit tighter. And I wish there was a little bit more of it. I'm hoping that maybe they can find a way to make a Cuphead 2 and get it out in a couple of years. And it's... Uh, really just more of the same but even better and uh, I look forward to a sequel from the creators of Cuphead even if it's not a Cuphead game which that might be what they have to do is that they just make a but uh, boss fight slash uh, slash uh, platform or game that doesn't have that artistic style therefore it's quicker and easier to, to make. Another victory. <coughs> Alright. So we're doing beat down and just trying to fill up our friend requests. Hmm. And we still have, well, we don't have Challenger Friends, so actually I don't even need that. I need to get a ridiculous amount of Rogue and Warrior victories, which do we think we could win with more if we come over here and try to play a little ranked. And might as well play ranked. Let's try Rogue and begin. see next bit of news there was a ton of news today but we're almost done 
the Idol Master Stella Stage second trailer is out. It's showing off a coaching and off systems, uh, which I imagine the off system is when you're uh, through coaching, you can bloom your hidden talents and abilities of the idols by spending coaching points. So it's it's just eh, expandable abilities for your singers, idol masters, singers, group singers of pop music, Japanese pop music. Uh, so what is the off system? Hmm. Hmm. For some reason, the concert is is not as exciting as usual. What's going on at times like these? Give the idol some time off. Okay, so you you're just managing them and giving them time the time off. Uh, which it seems like the off system is probably an excuse to send the idols to a to the beach and show them off in bikinis or similar activities like I'm seeing pictures here of uh, them let's see well these could also just be all outfits for performances but they're here you know, they're in the Santa Claus suits and beach wear and regular clothes and then usually when they're on stage they're on very flashy colors not particularly provocative clothes, but flashy and wild and out there cosplay type stuff. Hmm. Uh, Idol Master has some troubles coming over to the West, in my mind, because of the music not really grabbing people's attention. So, like until that kind of gets fixed uh, and I don't know how you really fix that other than replacing all the music in Idol Master with with Western music would which that wouldn't really work either so I think it's just forever doomed to be a niche product and let's see let's come over to our Twitter we're at the humble store and let's see. we're out of news finally and I've got a bunch of notifications let's see what this is um, here's a non article by PC gamer about what a player unknown battlegrounds movie would look like we don't need to talk about that until the movie is actually out uh, hmm. Let's see. Gearboxes. Uh, hiring yet another UI. I think it was UI animator developer. Uh, so they're still looking for people. People to work for them. Uh, which makes sense like they're they're kind of scaling up more and more they're trying to be a publisher more and more they're trying to get somewhere down the path of finishing Borderlands 3 and they're also making the Penn and Teller game with Desert Bus 2 which I think is I think I heard is completely done now so that probably wasn't taking all of their resources anyways. Uh, let's go to our notifications and see. Uh, bot, 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 and bot. All liking my videos. So useful on Twitter to be liked by all these bots. Let's do this. So that puts us right in position. And speaking of bot, poor Nightbot hasn't been able to say anything the on the commands at all. 
And certainly I don't have time to to like trigger it. Like the the I could trigger it. I could tell Nightbot to say something and then but unless the conversation happens because there is a limiter of how often it will talk. It will only it won't spam the field. It will only talk if two other comments have been made very possibly by two other people uh, when the chat has been completely empty like this chat for the most part has been today it's not very good and I'm still not sure why Monday's a bad day like everybody hates Mondays certainly I, I don't know if there's really anything for the TV equivalent of of things that TV shows that come on Mondays. Uh, maybe Wednesday should be the big day. I, uh, there's just a lot of confusion and unknown elements as far as when is a good day for a YouTube streamer to stream? Uh, generally speaking, it seems like people want you to uh, to always stream every day, but it doesn't seem like that's that really pays off. Or even if it did pay off, it just doesn't work for me. Hmm. But streaming still does work. It's still getting me new subscribers to replace the old subscribers that get bored and leave or leave some for some other reason. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if I could delete half of the people that I've blocked. I guess there's no real reason to. And one would hope that YouTube would eventually get its system fixed so that those people that have been blocked, those spammers in particular, uh, that they would be removed as soon as their account was deleted. Hmm. Comments. Let's see. Yeah, I'm kind of in a weird position now. I guess we're we're kind of done. So after this game, we'll go into the post-game show. Uh, just sort of struggle for some victories. I think that's kind of all I need. Let's come over here and look at the content ID situation. I'd like to get back to playing Tales of Monkey Island. It's, it's a decent game. It's nice to play a good game. I've gone through a bunch of bad ones lately. Alright, let's see. Copyright claim, copyright claim, copyright claim. Lots of copyright claims on that one. I'm not even gonna bother to dispute that one. I'm just gonna delete it. Uh, Let's see. Copyright dispute in progress, in progress, in progress, in progress, in progress. A dispute not approved. Uh, in progress, in progress, in progress. In progress, in progress, in progress. There's way too many of these. Like, and then not approved, not approved, not approved, not approved, not approved. Hey, I think one of them was approved. Or worked in some other way. Man, I can never stay on top of these copyright things. There's too many, too many people claiming copyright on things that are fair use. Hmm. And see, now I'm just kind of browsing tubes. I'm just browsing the web. Let's see. 
And as far as missing features in the new YouTube app, it's still missing a lot of features. Like, the, they, they finally put up a thing saying, look, here's all the missing features we know about on the YouTube Video Manager beta because there's just so much missing. And it's nice for them to at least address it and say, look, we actually plan on fixing this. Uh, and I guess that leaves us with nothing. So let's... We're 10 minutes over. We got three recordings on a Monday, which is a little strange. In theory, I could stop right now. I guess I need to make that decision. Do I want to stop or do I want to go to muted game plus play? Hmm. I guess I want to stop because uh, here's my line of thinking. Uh, I've... It's been really bad. Like, a really bad stream. Uh, for as far as people chatting and chatting is so important it is way more important it's arguably more important than what I'm doing on this screen like uh, or what I'm saying having feedback having people talk on on YouTube promotes the videos and by promoting the video and getting more people into a cir circle of more people watching, more people chatting, therefore more people watching, therefore more people chatting, just building up and snowballing. That alone, this guy's got 143 damage, uh, is, is the number one factor to helping a video succeed. This stream, even though I'm going longer, trying to, uh, trying to have, uh, give more opportunity for people to watch and, and more people to catch the video, it's not working today. Maybe because it's October 16th, maybe because it's October, maybe it's because I started too early, maybe it's because it's Monday. Like, all potential reasons... And all, most of which I don't know the solution to. But I do know it's not working right now. So whenever they decide to win, I want to, I probably should just concede. But we got nine more cards, so. I don't even know if I get experience for using my hero power. So, yeah, as long as we're good, as long as we're good for Wednesday, I think I can just leave everything as as it is on Wednesday. So we need to check that out. Hmm. If I could assassinate this one and this one, in seven turns. Hmm. Usually I would cooperate more, but and, and let this guy pull off whatever tricks he wants to do, but honestly I think we'll just save ourselves some time and concede. I do. So, let's see. Um, I do have some post-game stuff I need to do because I need to get this beat down done and then I might very well just trade. And so there will be a little bit of post-game play but maybe not that much. Uh, We'll play as like the hunter, and then if we switch 
to the European because I know we've already done everything on the American account. Like, hmm. There you are, back from your adventures. Like over here, we've got this. What's well, a challenge of friend? So maybe we can get a challenge of friend to work. Well, though that's gonna be it for this recording. We're going to post game show, uh, which post game muted post game doesn't become part of the episodes, but it's boring anyways. As always, I ask you to like. Share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.